Thanks for staying with us. Let's bring you some sports updates. It's time to get your cheer song for the men in blue in tune and smear the tricolor on your faces. The fever has already begun here on NDTV Hindu with our World Cup special. Second warm-up match for the men in blue. India set a target of 361 runs for the Kiwis. And Chidambaram Stadium's jam-packed crowd bore witness to some scintillating deliveries from Gautam Gambhir and MS Dhoni proving to be one of the best warm-up matches in the cricketing history. Sachin Tendulkar was back to the playing 11 against Kiwis today but failed to impress as he got out very cheaply at the score of just 17 runs. Seva too followed him quickly and India was in big trouble at the end of the first power play with both the openers back in the pavilion at the score of just 42 runs. From there, Gautam Gambhir and Virat Kohli took the innings forward steadily. Both the Delhi batsmen built a strong partnership of 106 runs before Kohli got out in the 30th over after scoring 59 runs. Following Kohli's dismissal, Gambhir took the charge and scored 44 runs in just 31 balls. But he missed out on a well-deserved run and got out at the score of 89 runs. Suresh Raina joined the skipper on the crease and both of them took the Indian innings to a different level. In the last 10 overs of the innings, India scored 136 runs with Dhoni scoring 79 of just 33 balls. Raina too played a brilliant knock of 50 runs but the highlight of the match was Dhoni hitting 7 fours in a row. This is the highest ever total by the Indian team at the M.H. Chidambaram Stadium but unfortunately this being a warm-up game, it won't be counted as an official ODI score. In China, with Sudarshan, this is Ashmit Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Well, in uh, more updates, while chasing that score of 361, the Kiwis started on the aggressive note, with both the openers scoring at the run rate of 6 per over in the first two power play. But they failed to maintain the same momentum when uh, Indian spinners were brought into the attack. Kiwis' middle team collapsed. The stand-in skipper Ross Taylor failed again now at the end uh, of 37 overs. The score, score now is 197 for 7. Joining us live from outside the MH Idambaram Stadium is our sports reporter Natasha who has been tracking that match uh, very closely. Natasha, has it been double disappointment now with the Pacers and the Spinners not really keeping up to the mark? Is it going to be a tough pick for Captain Cool uh, for the final league match? Well, Evelyn, uh, they've, uh, New Zealand has already lost about six wickets and quite frankly, they've lost their crucial wickets that could have ever done any damage really uh, to the Indians, uh, Indian scoreboard at this point. Uh, now, 361 is not an easy score to really chase, uh, especially, um, especially under lights here. Considering the fact that New Zealand is not really um, used to uh, the, the wicket right now, uh, I don't think they were very happy with it when they were practicing. Um, so at this point, really, it is not um, going to be going in favor of New Zealand. Uh, they've already lost their major uh, major wickets right now, their major batsmen, the experienced batsmen, as I had mentioned earlier. Um, they had, uh, they, oh, the only batsman that they have going for them right now is uh, Scott Styrus. And uh, to be partnered with Jacob Oram right now is not entirely in his favor either. Um, but uh, of course, we, if we look ahead of uh, the World Cup, this is going to be uh, really something that India should be looking forward to if they win it in style. Now, the, the New Zealand is only closing in on their 200th uh, score on, on the board right now uh, with, of course, losing six wickets. Um, so India making a stamp right now is something crucial for them that they have been looking forward to from the very beginning um, the, of course the middle order kicking in uh, for the um, for the team for team india in the very beginning in the first uh, innings now new zealand is really in the danger zone they have been uh, of course uh, looking ahead saying that they had beaten india about only six to eight months ago by about 200 runs they had been banking on that and and sort of trying to gather around a little bit of confidence for their team but of course even john wright uh, wasn't sounding very confident at all at his press conference when he was uh, speaking to the journalist uh, only yesterday and he said that it, it was still a honeymoon period that he was having with uh, the New Zealand players so really no impact there Evelyn 
Right. Uh, thanks very much indeed, uh, Natasha, for joining us with those updates. Well, the Kiwis are seven wickets down and um, a win close uh, in sight is perhaps what uh, every True Blue fan is looking at. But clearly, a ticket for the World Cup can keep away all of that tension and your doctor at bay as well. This is where NDTV Hindu plays Santa with our special contest, Your Ticket to the Wicket. Your chance to take home a ticket to the first league match that Chennai City plays host to, that is at the M.A. Chidambaram Stadium, where uh, the Kiwis will be playing the Kenyans. All you have to do is weave us a line about your favourite team or squad and tell us um, what your cheer line is going to be. So you can spin out your one liner, make it wacky, snappy, and send it to us to feedback at ndtv hindu.com. Or you can also SMS us uh, at 99625 The winning entry will be announced on the 18th of this month. That's the day after. You never know, you could be the lucky one. Now, every student's dream is to join a very good college and land with a good job with a fat pay package. But it is uh, not as easy as this. Uh, what about those students who are first generation learners? Who will mentor them? Pratiksha Ramkumar tells us about the hurdles faced by these students and some solutions as well. Tamil Nadu saw 78,000 first generation schoolgoers joining colleges across the state in 2010. But a job at a swanky corporate office continues to elude them. Because most Tier 2 and Tier 3 colleges are given a miss by leading corporate houses during recruitment time. IT companies don't have the bandwidth to go to all this 500 odd engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. ICT Academy being a, 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 a center point between industry and academia, we are giving them a platter in which we will, uh, skill, we will increase the skill set of the students in the tier 2, tier 3 locations. The other huge challenge students face while applying to multinational companies is the language barrier. Not being fluent in at least two languages is a major handicap on the job market. We can't demand a quota because they are private sectors, but uh, we ask them not to look at language as the most essential component. Look at the other att attributes of a student, whether he's intelligent, whether he can think for himself, whether he's innovative, and keep language at the bottom of the ladder. And building that crucial bridge between students and the corporate sector is the ICT, which trains students in soft skills and other private players in education who are also looking at new skill enhancement software. Even students of big towns or C-class uh, towns can aspire to be working in an Infosys or a bit. Skills, teaching English, all that is part of our package. In Chennai, with Ashmit Kumar, Pratiksha Ram Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Well, on to some business news now. India consumes 700 tons of gold and owns 11% of gold on the planet. 50 crore people purchase gold in one form or the other. And the masters of the financial world are ready to profit from India's fetish for the precious metal. India's largest mutual fund group launched the first systemic uh, investment plan or SIP as it's known in gold. The money will be de-channelized strictly for buying gold and no speculation. Interestingly, unlike uh, investing in mutual funds, this SIP will not require a DMAT account. Meanwhile, promoters are hard selling features such as exemption from wealth tax and exploiting wholesale prices of gold to attract potential investors. And even as this SIP arrives, there is already speculation of other mutual fund majors developing similar products. Well, up ahead on the bulletin, NDTV Hindu connects you to the superstar magic once again. Make a special wish for Rajni Kant, who's shining even brighter after a decade worth of stardom.